If you want to get good, you have to sacrifice. People are starting to remember CSGO as I remember 1.6. CSGO felt like the last hope for Counter-Strike in many ways. Oh, this is huge! Doji's throwing a million in the corner just as the bomb's gonna go off! They're both gonna go down! The defuse is coming in, hasn't he? He's still going! Oh! Now look at the little dance of happiness! And for the first time in history, the best of all fucking time! For the second time, Pronex was one fry oh, oh Docs as they cross the middle, it's gonna be a challenge and game <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for some counter strike? In order to tell the story of CSGO, to understand what it is, what it was, and what it will be, we need to go back in time. In the beginning, back in 1999, there was the original Counter-Strike, and it was good. Quite I'm not getting a frag when he needs to. Oh, oh, so close. Wow! Oh, 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 my God! Wow. What a clutch for us! HP remaining! Got so much work on his hands. Gets the first one, gets the second one, gets the third one. Two versus one! Oh, amazing from Zonic. That four from Zonic. One more remaining. And he's gonna peek out and he is gonna win it! What an absolutely amazing round from Zonic! By the early to mid 2000s, CS had gone from an experiment conducted by a couple of college kids to an official Valve property and one of the first truly global esports. The key for Counter Strike and me is very early on it became like kind of a global game, you know. It was one of the first esports that wasn't just like a few countries are really into it or just one region is into it. It's like nearly the whole world to some degree was interested in Counter Strike. The game was viciously fast paced but painstakingly strategic. Endlessly sophisticated, yet simple enough for a 10 year old to understand. It wasn't convoluted or inaccessible, it just had a skill ceiling so high that only a handful of humans could hit it. It wasn't until the advent of 1.6 in 2003 that Counter-Strike started catching sight of its only real problem. It was too good, so much so that all of Valve's attempts to iterate on it seemed doomed from the start. First, there was the Xbox release. Unfortunately, by this point, the console generation had already begun to take shape, and Valve's controller-oriented Counter-Strike was eclipsed by burgeoning titles like Halo and Call of Duty. Then, in mid-2004, Valve oversaw the release of Condition Zero, a retexturized version of 1.6 that underwent a series of setbacks, delays, and reworks on account of its third-party developers. But the annoyances around Condition Zero were short-lived, since eight months after its release, Valve published what was both CS's first true successor and its most controversial one, Source. It did have some issues at launch, I don't think there's any doubt about that which uh, did turn a lot of the people off because obviously if you've got an existing game that's been out for years and it's great and everything works perfectly fine because it's been tweaked and then you've got something new and it doesn't quite work, obviously you're going to stick to the one that you know and stick to the one that you feel is complete. The criticism laid against Source was simple. It didn't feel like Counter-Strike. Valve did implement a wide array of changes, mostly intended to improve quality of life, but a lot of old school 1.6ers thought they lowered the skill ceiling. Most, for me, what I believe is that most people kind of didn't get the same feeling from Swords at 1.6, kind of more like the Lost Brother or like it felt plastic, the movement wasn't as good, and just like the way the feel of the game when playing and shooting, like everything just felt off with that game. The result was a divide, a battle between source apologists and diehards who refused to abandon the old ways. For eight years, the Counter-Strike community had to endure a civil war, until finally, in 2012, a new hope emerged. But before you're leaving, somebody told me, if you've got game, 
Can you ask him only one question? And I believe many of them wants to know. When are you going to release Counter-Strike 2? Nah. Nah, nah. <laughs> After ignoring their prized FPS for nearly a decade, Valve finally decided to bless the community with a full-fledged Counter-Strike title, a place for Source lovers and 1.6ers alike to take up arms and usher their game into the next generation. CSGO it felt like the last hope for Counter-Strike in many ways. And as soon as it launched, the consensus surrounding Counter-Strike Global Offensive was clear. It fucking sucked. It was absolute dog shit from memory. It was really, really bad. I remember complaining about like, I mean, I'm, I remember people complaining about Molotovs, the recall control, everything was just different and everyone was very against it. I don't think I liked it because you're getting so used to the game you were playing before and then you have to start on something new and the game isn't fully evolved and stuff like that. So you know there's coming more updates, but still you're just like, what the hell is this? CSGO was imbalanced, riddled with bugs and had extremely wonky mechanics. What's more, the game was essentially a combination of 1.6 and Source, leaving a large majority of both player bases dissatisfied. Oh, my first impression was terrible, to be honest. First of all, I was really frustrated because, as I said, my career on CS Source was just starting, so I, uh, I didn't know what to expect, pretty much. Uh, before the first tournament I played, which was Jamak Valencia, the day before in practice, I was terrible. My manager was better than me. The Molotovs were so overpowered, I think they slowed you down when you walked through them, and they gave more damage than they do now or something like that, and you couldn't uh, distinguish them, but there were so many game-breaking bugs. People literally predicted that it would kill Counter-Strike. Uh, it's a little bit hyperbole, but it's like a way to sort of say like that they had gone into the other direction, basically, where it's like, it's too much, you know. That to me signal, oh no, like we've, we've lost the plot here. CSGO had been dropped by IEM. No major tournaments were running it because ESWC was dropping off a cliff at that point in time. Essentially, it was a second tier game. But there was one team that saw CSGO for what it could be, a generational battleground, the one true successor to Counter-Strike and one of the world's next big esports. The team was Ninjas in Pajamas, a Swedish super squad who brought together the best of the best from both 1.6 and Source in an effort to take the CSGO scene by storm. And they did. Hopefully Getaway will do something here with the back seven. One, two, three, Frags for Getaway! Maybe even a fourth here with the back seven. I don't believe my own eyes! Will we have another shotgun ace here in North North? Very low in HP, but it's just in yet remaining. We'll get my gathers. Oh, oh, oh my god! So in CS's early days, you essentially had Nip who was made for the game. Freiburg was the entry frag, Fiflaren was the opper, Exist was the in-game leader, and Forrest and Get Right were the two star players which completely rolled over everyone. With these five ingredients, you had the team that went 87 and 0. Now that's a record that still stands to this day, and it just shows like how dominant they were in the early days of CSGO. Sick and tired of watching NIP win everything in sight, other rosters started to follow suit. In addition to the fact that NIP had lit a fire under the ass of competitive CSGO, the game had improved significantly in the months following its release. The game was improving very quickly, very quickly in fact, much quicker than normally you would expect. Couple this with the announcement of the game's first ever major in late 2013, and it was finally starting to feel as if Valve actually cared about Counter-Strike. So when the DreamHack winner tournament was announced for CSGO in 2013, it almost felt like a validation of the CSGO scene and the CSGO competitive scene specifically. But this would only be the first step of what we would get in the future. NIP's first real challenger came in the form of French powerhouse Very Games. But soon, another Swedish terror rolled around, and they were good enough to surpass NIP. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. This Forest alone in a one on three. I think we just might be ready for it. Forest picks up the one kill, but he has no scout. I mean, it's a one on two. All Snyder and, uh, and JD, all they have to do is just wait and buy time. And there it is. They win it, and look at the 
Ivan Khan jumping up, one of the most uh, composed people I think in Counter-Strike. Complete celebration. What a victory and how they deserve it. By 2014, CSGO had blossomed into everything the community had hoped for. It had become a full-fledged eSport. France, Poland, and both of Sweden's best squads had each secured a major title, and the game had amassed a repertoire of mythological moments. Device around the world, we go, but the diffuse, the diffuse is coming in. Has, he's still going. Oh, just about gets it as the flames come in. And look at the little dance of happiness. That is how to control your nerves in a situation. Dance it out, but my God. Standard gamer though, do they have a weird boost going on currently? Yes, Look all at this boost. Oh, my, oh god. my god, this is beautiful. He's coming out of squeak door as well. He's here, he sees them down there. Straight headshot, they have no idea. <laughs> Smith's looking confused and dazed, and there's gonna be a follow up headshot. Oh my star, you gotta be kidding me. He takes down Hiroshima as well. Fnatic last time the retake didn't work this time. They're feeling more solid. Get right coming up from behind, but he's also alone in a one on two. Throws out another grenade here, gets up another kill. Is it happening again? Pronax is alone. That bomb is in the middle of nowhere. He's gonna have to sit down. The only goes down. Get right clutches it. It happens again. Get right is gonna be waiting. Hiko charges in. Doesn't check oh, it. What? Whoa. Oh my god. Inhuman reactions. And here it comes. Two on five. JW and Flusher. There is nothing they can do any longer. NIP have won Gamescom 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, 16 13. It finally happens. After nearly a year, after nearly a year, two second place finishes. They finally claim the title. They are the champions. Gamescom 2014. Then, there was the fact that the game's player base had skyrocketed. Much of this had to do with the fact that, in late 2013, CSGO was given what is perhaps its most significant feature, skins. The skins update was a big change for the community, giving you something you can buy, something that you can customize your guns. It's done where it doesn't necessarily impact gameplay, but it gives people this exciting element to keep coming back and keep playing to get more skins. By late 2014, CSGO had surged in popularity, and it felt as if the game had already gotten bigger than anyone thought was possible. And then, 2015 happened. Kenny S stuck in the site, finding more. That's brilliant, and Kenny S again up close! Oh my goodness, Kenny S! They're they aren't rushing this time around. They're taking their sweet time, hoping to catch somebody peek on Envy's side. And well, that's what happens when you go around the corner, happy with Wandig. Oh, and another one! Oh, and a third! Happy! Debris is like sweating bullets! Happy, he's gonna get the quad kill in the ace! What is this? 50 out, jumping and shooting, he gets one more kill, looking for it, he's got him hunted down, time is up, oh my god, Gary, are you gonna be kidding me, he gets the last kill in, one second left. They just need two kills here, and they will win it, for the second time, Pronex with one cry, oh my god, he's breathed down, he gets both kills, and the grand final continues. 15 to 13. Last nanosecond kill, and look at the guns oh for AWPs. Fnatic, they're ready to shoot some <laughs> ducks as they cross the middle. It's going to be a challenge, and Apex not in this lifetime. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going to require a miracle and nothing less for Happy to make it out. I don't think there's any chance. Flush are looking to end this. It's going to be a third title for Fnatic. They win a third major championship in global offensive. Wow, what a way to finish it. The best team of the Counter-Strike Global Offensive history. I think that is pretty clear by this, by this moment. We saw Katowice shatter viewership records. We watched the indomitable reign of Kenny S. We cheered at Cologne, arguably the greatest major of all time. 2015 was the year that CSGO didn't just boom, it exploded. Is he gonna try and go huge here? Kenny S on sight, straight in his face, doesn't hit the nose go, doesn't hit the pistol! Oh! But it also had its fair share of downs. For starters, there was the R8, an obscenely overpowered revolver that managed to single-handedly destroy the game in three days before it was nerfed. 
it's like a nightmare. This is the antithesis, the anathema of everything that Counter-Strike is supposed to be in terms of its principles and its framework as a game. It's like Valve don't understand the actual core concept tenants, the core tenants, the concepts, the components that made CS a great game. Then there was the infamous op nerf, which sent devotees of Counter-Strike's single most iconic weapon into nothing short of an existential crisis. I was like, damn, why did it do that? that that's, that's so unfair for me because I actually felt like that they did it for me. They did it because of me. That's not necessarily true, but... And last, but certainly not least, the North American match-fixing scandal, after which members of I Buy Power were famously issued indefinite bans. But I thought you guys needed to know that, that actually, if I could have got us to a resolution where the guys just did a, even a season ban from Sevo, all I wanted to do was highlight that match-fixing was real, it was going on, and people were effectively being defrauded from their skins in exchange for profits. By 2016, it had become apparent that the game would have to overcome certain obstacles if it hoped to keep growing in the same way League or Dota were. For starters, it was an esport in which counter-terrorism was both gamified and glorified, something which potential investors didn't find very appealing. Anything outside of esports won't go anywhere near French teams right now because of, because of the climate there is in France. Everyone's interested by the stats that CS brings, but as soon as they hear terrorists against anti-terrorists, that's it. I'm not going anywhere near it. Unlike League, Dota, and the recently released Overwatch, CS wasn't cartoonish and family-friendly. It was a milsim driven bloodbath, one whose photorealistic guns and incessant gore made for difficult conversations in sales and marketing meetings. I love the analogy um, that, I, that I also try and bring up all the time to UFC. They have the same problem. How do they find sponsorships for the UFC? You have an octagon in which people are, you know, quite literally bleeding on the company logos that are sponsoring them. You're only going to find like a handful of sponsors that are in on that. There was also the issue of cheating. Following the back ban of French opera Cali in 2014 and suspicions around North American up-and-comer Sabrosa two years later, a hysteria started to develop around the idea that players could be cheating on land. The, the, these allegations aren't coming from online games. These allegations are coming from land in this instance, actually seems the community overwhelmingly believes that this guy is a cheat. And let's not forget the fact that by 2016, skin gambling was reported to have become a billion dollar industry. Things came to a head when YouTubers T. Martin and Pro Syndicate started marketing a lottery site that they happened to own, a fact they failed to disclose to their viewers. And we found this new site called CSGO Lotto. So I'll link it down in the description if you guys wanna check it out. But we were betting on it today and I won a pot of like $69 or something like that. So it's a pretty small pot. It resulted in an FTC investigation, 23 cease and desist letters, and several class action lawsuits against Valve for condoning underage gambling. But the biggest obstacle facing CSGO was the fact that Valve, the very developer who brought Counter-Strike to the masses, didn't seem to care whether or not it succeeded. Okay, is that how Counter-Strike works now? This guy's just gonna go like that and I'm dead? You literally see, like, his fucking shoulder patch and you just die from a pistol from that far away? God, Gaben, you suck so much penis at making video games. It fucking hurts me, bro. It fucking... You're so rich, it's insane. How could you not fix this fucking game? Sorry, sorry, chat. A lot of this had to do with the fact that since CSGO's launch in 2012, Valve had put nearly all of their eggs in the Dota basket. From a multi-million dollar tournament, to an engine overhaul, to a never-ending sea of skins, feature implementations, gameplay updates, and seasonal events, Dota had everything an enthusiast could ask for. CSGO, on the other hand... It's because people are starting to get over skins a little bit. And Counter-Strike's going back to where it was supposed to be. And that is, before the skins came out, the game was really not very far, really not doing that well in a competitive standpoint, and just a, you know, a mediocre competitive game. But the community persevered. In fact, it was around this time that CS saw the rise of a new generation of competitors. Competitors who were young enough that they'd come up on Go. The result was an influx of players who'd grown impossibly attuned to the game's complex mechanics. Double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. He's gonna fall down again. Oh, what is this crap from Simple? Are you serious? What is that? You can't do that, Simple. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. 
It was also around this time that CSGO started to solidify itself as a truly international esport. 2016 saw one of 1.6's single most dominating regions make a thunderous return to the world of Counter-Strike, Brazil. Here he comes once again. The first base is a trend. He's going to hit the ground there. It's cold. Oh, oh what? It's jumping double from cold. What is there going on right now? How does he do this? Cold is safe. Luminosity with the all play. Guardian versus Taco. It may just be destined to be. And it's Luminosity winning their first major championship. Trying to walk through the smoke, but it's just not going to happen. SK Gaming, second major championship in a row. They are your winners. And by 2017, more contenders than ever were entering the fray, from the long-awaited resurgence of the Danes. Pasha coming in with a refrag, but he's down. The bomb has been picked up by Dupree. They get the spray. Neil takes one and turns it there. And Astralis, they win the first major championship. 16-14 against Virtus Pro. Unbelievable. To one of the greatest Cinderella stories in Counter-Strike history. I just say, all of Meister, I love you. And second, God help me, and I won measure. Woo! 2017 was the year that CSGO entered a new era of competitive play, one in which no single region could rightfully exert superiority over the others, and rosters were diversifying as a result. Kill all in in one position, and Guardian makes a chip nice try to find the flash. And Nico fittingly gets the last kill as FaZe dominate New York in 2017 in the Barclays Center all the way through this tournament. They've looked so, so good. Still, it felt as if the game was continuously being bottlenecked and had plateaued. As if this adored esport was fated to play second fiddle to the newer, flashier titles in terms of popularity, sustainability, and acceptance, all because it had an absent and uncaring developer. Valve just sitting up on high and then every now and then suddenly like 10 cows fall over dead and we're all supposed to in intuit what does that mean? Oh, are they angry with us? Oh, maybe it's because of what we said about the R8. Like, this is not a reasonable state of affairs for a game that's making hundreds of millions of dollars. The future of CSGO didn't necessarily look grim, it just didn't look as bright as the community felt it should be. With TI's prize pool becoming increasingly absurd and franchising being touted as the future of esports, it felt as if slowly but surely, Counter-Strike was being overshadowed. And then, in January of 2018, something momentous happened. After this round, we're either going to overtime, or we're crowning a new major champion. We're handing away a trophy in this next round, potentially. Something so historic that it brought the gaming world to its feet. But out automatics going towards say nothing else is going on. He's got to go back. Stewie's on his own. But look at the time. Look at the time. There's seven seconds to blow the bomb. They're trying to build pyramids, but there's no more play. Stewie's oh! won the round. We go to overtime. Tango have done it. How have they done that? They came back all the way. All the way. In a year when a billion dollar battle royale became the most played video game in creation, when franchising became a reality, when streaming Fortnite and Ninja somehow became synonymous with esports, a year in which OG Cinderella their way to the ages in the most miraculous way imaginable, and IG liberated League of Legends from the tyranny of South Korea. Five North American misfits banded together in Boston, bruised, battered, and bled their way to the finals of a major, and put on the performance that shattered one of Twitch's most coveted viewership records. In the corner with the AWP, do they realize this? I think he's been spotted now. He does have a smoke to play with. He can delay them. If he can occupy their attention long enough, his teammates can make them play. Just by staying there, he's a threat! Oh my goodness, Skadoodle does it with automatic! My God! Do you know what that noise means, That It means it's match point cloud nine, again. There, they reminded the world of something that it never should have forgotten in the first place. That no matter who they are, where they are, or whatever other games they might enjoy, whether they're nerds, normies, or something in between, people show up for Counter-Strike. Automatic 
pushing through. It's Guardian versus two. Converging on Guardian box ID right now. For the fucking win, dude. Send them home. Send them home. Send them home. Oh my god, stop that. Holy shit. Guardian waits patiently as Cloudmine sets the push up. Oh! Oh, it's happened! They made it work! Cloud9! Get one the major, bro! <laughs> that is the most insane way to win a major. This has to be one of the most incredible storylines we've ever had. Counter-Strike isn't just a game. It's a way of life, a culture, a community, one of the oldest institutions in all of esports. One of the biggest things about Counter-Strike is just how it's always been evolving. But yet, the fundamentals of it haven't really changed at all. And it's the community involvement that I think has been so big to the growth of it over time. It's a 20-year-old Half-Life mod with awful graphics, outdated mechanics, and a shitty sound engine. And yet, it remains the crown jewel of FPSs. The OG, the GOAT, the most storied, serious, prestigious, enduring, and competitive shooter the world has ever seen. The medium for clicking heads against which all others are judged. And by 2019, it felt like people were starting to remember that. Holding it now, and there is it. It's just out of flaming. It's not gonna happen. As Scarlet has won the face of London Major. Like there'd been a call to action. Back to back ECS, back to back Pro League, Marseille, Season 7, Chicago, and now for the first time ever at home, Season 8, Astrology are the champions of ESL Pro League, and for the first time in history, the best of all fucking time, Intel Grand Slam, it's the strongest. And teams were answering it like never before. 20 seconds left, and Ali chipped in for a third, and a Heads have done it! They pulled off the upset! As if anything were possible. If it's RPK that's dropped, they could be in serious trouble. That should do it! There we go! It's Team Liquid! And that's what it means to them! And Elias, how long can he survive? Looks like he gets a headshot on the way out, but he will burn. And Evanga will have themselves a grand final appearance here at the Berlin Major. Can you believe it? No one expected them to get there, but they have proved us all wrong. Leaving a trend in a one versus four. And ladies and gentlemen, they've done it! As if everyone, from fans to streamers to players to orgs, had found a reason to get excited about Counter-Strike again. We're good, we're good. We're better. Are you actually defusing this out of opening? What are you doing? You're right, hold on. I, I, could, you I could open one. Get off me. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. We're fine, we're fine, what do you mean? I just had to open one real quick. And we're finally in a position to capitalize on that excitement. You can show everything about the screen. Get a CSGO excuse, basically what I'm talking. We're getting a CSGO excuse. It felt like, for the first time in a long time, the future of CS was uncertain, in a good way. I definitely think at one point they will make something. Assuming that it, it works the way that you want a franchise league to work, sure. It doesn't matter whether you're flicking your op, flipping your knife, winning a major or rushing B after a few beers. You're engaged in some of the most esteemed and elemental practices in all of esports. And whatever happens, whatever the future holds for the beautiful ballistic thing that we call Counter-Strike, one thing is for certain, it's not going anywhere.
Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.